This is Ask the Boot Guy number 28. So this Ask the Boot Guy question comes from my YouTube comments and it's from a guy called Niggy. Now Niggy asks on the Nike Manoa boot, hey, would this be a good winter boot? Which really led me to start thinking about this question. Would this be a good boot? And of course the answer is no. The Nike Manoa would make a horrible winter boot in winter conditions. But the question really isn't that. I think the question, I mean, though that, that is the question, that is what was asked. I think what really needs to be stated, and it's about time we tackle this question, is what makes a good winter boot? What do you say we try and nail this question down? What do you say we try and talk about this? All right, let's start. All right, so what makes a good winter boot? Well, let's approach this from the idea that it's your first time wearing boots. You decided that after years of wearing sneakers, running around in the snow, freezing your feet, getting wet, stepping in wet, muddy puddles, it's time to get some boots. And you're getting older and you feel that having a nice pair of leather boots really offsets your wardrobe. So it's more of a fashion thing and this whole answer to the question is going to be based around that. You guys who are working guys, listen, you don't really need to comment and tell everybody that they're stupid and whatnot. You don't have to do that. This is really for guys who are just trying to get into wearing boots. And let's approach it from that. Let's just offer them the little bit of knowledge that we all have about putting boots on our feet and going out in foul weather. All right, first and foremost, you gotta understand that there's two different types of boots when it comes to foul weather that you really gotta be aware of which one you're gonna wanna wear. There's a six inch boot and there's an eight inch boot. Personally, I don't think anybody needs anything more than a six inch boot for casual type wearing, for getting around, getting on the train, getting on the bus, getting in and out of the car, going to work a six inch insulated boot would be fine. Now, if you're feeling daring and if you really want to try something different, move into an eight inch winter boot. If you think having that extra two and a half inches is going to make a big difference, go for it. Try them on, see what you think. I'll tell you straight up that with an eight inch boot, eventually you're going to start to feel it on the back of your calf, right above your Achilles tendon. If you haven't worn that type of boot before, it might be extremely uncomfortable. That's why I say you should stick with a six inch boot. You'll be happy, easy to break in, and you're not going to be upset. Get yourself a six inch boot. If you're starting out, start with a six inch boot. Insulation, let's talk about it. It is completely misconstrued out there. In the world of footwear sales, when you walk into a store, whether it be a work store, whether it be an outdoor store, whether it just be one of those places that you kind of wander into, the salespeople are gonna tell you, oh, you need a lot of insulation. If it's 30 degrees out, if it's 25 degrees out, they're gonna say, oh, you should have twice as much insulation. You'll be super warm. There are a lot of drawbacks to having a boot that is too heavily insulated. And one is sweat. I mean, sweat is not a good thing to have inside your boot when it's cold outside. Sweat has your salt in it. It's gonna cool down a lot quicker and it's gonna keep your boot really, really wet. Now, what are some good amounts of insulation to look for? Well, hey, if it's a casual boot, I'm gonna say start with 200 grams. You can't go wrong with 200 grams of insulation. When you have 200 grams, you can up the warmth of that boot just by adding a heavy duty winter wool sock. And we'll get to the wool socks because it's a really important part about winter boots. Now, if you're gonna look at four, 600, 800, and 1,000, you're probably looking to do something outside that is going to be for the long term. So if you gotta stand on a train platform, no matter which city you're in, and it's an exposed platform where there's no block in the wind, 
All right, I could understand having that pair of 600 gram insulated boots going to and fro just so you're comfortable, so you're protected from the wind, so you're protected from that cold bitterness that happens in the winter time. But if you're going from the car to the office, or if you're going from the office to the coffee shop, 600 grams is gonna be way too much because you're gonna be walking from, from 20 degrees or even lower, let's say 10, negative zero. Let's say you're at zero. You're gonna be going from zero degrees, walking into a place that's probably gonna be kept at 68 to 72 degrees. That thermal dynamic that's gonna happen is gonna make your foot completely sweat. And that's something that you do not want when it comes to winter time, especially if you're inside a place for a while and then you go back outside and your foot has started to perspire, you're just gonna get cold really quick. Now moving up into a thousand grams, if you're there, you're probably going outside for at least four to five hours, if not more, a thousand grams. At some point, you should think about changing your sock and just checking your boot to see if it's wet. Like I said, this is about the casual boot wearer. That guy who's gonna get his first pair of winter boots and wants to know more about how to stay warm and what makes a good winter boot. The sole, oh, is so important. And I always talk about it. Every boot review I do, I start with the sole. The sole is what touches the ground. The sole is what's there. The sole is so important to your boot. And understanding sole materials is something you probably don't wanna do. It's a very slippery slope. You go down there, you start looking into chemistry, and before you know it, you start asking yourself questions, deep life philosophical questions, because now you know what things are made out of. So let's just start here. A softer sole on an insulated boot, and I say soft, you should be able to push your finger and move it around. A soft sole like that's a really good thing to have. It's a basic principle. It's a basic physics principle here. It's, it, it's so basic, is the softer something is and the colder it gets, the longer it takes for it to return to a solid. When things get cold, they freeze, molecules slow down, they get harder. When you start with a harder sole, it's already hard, so it's gonna get harder as the temperature drops with your exposure. What happens with a harder sole is when you step on a surface that is also hard and cold, you don't get the resistance. You're creating two smooth planes. So by having a sole that is softer, it gives you some resistance, some pliability, it gives you some traction. So you get a better step when it comes to winter walking around. So let's cover these three basic things about winter boots if it's your first pair. First, look at six inch insulated boots. Second, insulation, 200 grams is plenty. 400 grams eh, would be okay, but just look at 200 grams. You will not be sorry. Soft sole on the bottom of the boot. Keep the sole soft, push on it. If it feels hard and feels like it's just not really gonna do you well, move on to a different style, move on to a different brand. A soft sole will give you more traction. Now let's move on to socks. Now socks are so important and I think it's overlooked. I think a lot of guys still wear the same socks their mothers bought them. They still buy their socks in a bag. If you're buying your socks in a bag, Let's make this winter the first winter that you go out and you buy socks that are free hanging, that have some wool in there. And wool, oh my God, what a great material when it comes to winter. If you don't wear wool socks now, get yourself a pair of wool socks. Now, when you go in stores, you're gonna see a lot of socks that look like winter socks. They're gonna say, oh, heavy duty winter socks. Look at this great sock, it's a heavy duty winter sock. Forget about it, read the fiber content. If it has 20% wool and the rest is nylon mixed with polypropylene and other materials, great sock. If it has more wool and less of the other materials, super sock. The most wool you can possibly get mixed with a material called polypropylene, the best thing you can do for your foot if you plan on being outside in the cold for a long time.
So like I said, I wanted to tackle this question for somebody who is picking up their first pair of winter boots. And please remember, if you got questions, put them below in the comments box. Guys, you've been hitting me up on the email. My email is out of control and I'm really sorry if I haven't gotten back to a lot of you. So try, if you got a real poignant question, try Instagram. Subscribe to my Instagram and hit me up there in the personal message. I understand that Instagram is owned by Facebook, so the Facebook account is kind of connected, but I use Instagram basically every single day because I am reviewing boots and I'm out in the field working with the different boots on. So I'm using Instagram all day long. It's constantly pinging, it's constantly pinging, whatever you wanna say. So I'll probably get back to you a little bit quicker than if you email me. Hey, please don't forget to hit my subscribe button below. You know it really helps out. Think about supporting me on Patreon if you enjoy these videos and if you enjoy all my reviews. All right, until the next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks for watching. to start thinking about this